Okay. Uh, with that roll, uh, your character is going to have one of two possible options. Uh-huh. Uh, you uh, will either, uh, as a result of, like, during this trip, will find yourself for several nights freezing and lose a recovery, or uh, you can choose to lose a useful piece of equipment. Not magical, but a useful piece of equipment that will just either rip or tear or break or get lost in the uh, wind and ice. Well, uh, I suppose my holy oil would qualify. I don't really have that much of equipment, actually. Okay. Uh, would that be the kind of thing that could, could sure, be lost? Sure, that would definitely qualify as a useful piece of equipment. All right. You don't uh, have anything less useful than that? I literally do not. I do right. not own that much okay. stuff. Uh, in the process of uh, uh, performing, uh, Aranos uh, temporarily loses hold of his backpack, and the oil of uh, Elemental Holy uh, falls out of it and shatters, and the liquid freezes on the ground. Hmm. Oh. Be a very holy pine cone or something. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas decorations. <laughs> oh, tannenbaum! Oh, tannenbaum! <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Well, uh, right, okay, right. you go first. No, it's terrible. <laughs> Okay, I'll go first. All Thank right. You. Uh, <laughs> I went first last time. <laughs> with the swamp and all the weather going on, there's bound to be plenty of treacherous terrain, like earth or dirt that looks stable enough, but that's essentially just floating on top of water, just waiting to, to swallow anyone walking on top of it. Yes. Aurelia, on the other hand, can be very light on foot and is also very quick to react to things. Okay. Uh, meaning that she would essentially want to essentially take point, scoping out kind of the terrain to see what's what we can walk on and what is essentially just water disguised as dirt. What are we looking at here, sheep? Uh, I don't think I can really justify any of my backgrounds, but I would like to use my dexterity at least for that. I like that. Let's see. That gives me... Yeah, that's that's okay. Okay. Uh, let me take a look at yonder thing. There's actually uh, some uh, terrain effects and environment stuff in 13th Age. I have not made this up on my own. Woohoo! Okay. Um, in this particular case, uh, you end up in the prospect of scouting and uh, looking for terrain. Uh, can choose one of the following two options. Uh, the first would be that an ice bridge breaks, and uh, you would have to choose another PC to lose two recoveries, including yourself. Uh, the other option that you could pick is uh, that you could... Uh, everyone who succeeds on their checks in the future would uh, have to re-roll their checks as you have created an avalanche. <laughs> so, how many recoveries do we have? Yeah, let, let's go for option first. As as Aurelia is scouting scouting around and hasn't really taken taken too much punishment so far, she would be the one to to take the fall essentially and essentially find out that her assessment of said ice bridge was very wrong. Okay, uh, Aurelia will lose two recoveries. Uh, also. I will go ahead and say that you folks should copy your tokens off the Prince Zarza's domain map and put them back onto the uh, the tactical map uh, where your tokens will not be located. Uh, keep track of the stuff there since you did leave. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who's next? Go next over. Since I went first before, do you want to go go next? Go go. Yeah, sure. Uh... Gurak will basically do the thing he did last time we went through here, and that is uh, using his strength to basically clear the way and uh, building rafts and stuff like that. We need to get over water, although it's frozen now. So maybe build some like snowshoes for himself and the others who need them, so sure that bridge. he won't, so that he won't crack through the ice basically when he walks on them. So basically to spread out the weight a bit. Okay. Uh, so I would like to use my strength and uh, let's see. 
background for that. Um, I don't really know if I have one. It would be the leader of Roshka Rain's companions again from his uh, travels in the world, basically. That'll work, sure. Okay, uh, you are able to accomplish what uh, you desire with Garak with no penalties. Right, good. Well, for Jasmine, um, she's navigated through here once, and with keen eyes of her own and her bird by her side, she has, she has spent a lot of time trying to navigate through terrain, and of course, well, in general, she's, she's, oh, she's not bad at na navigation and trying to keep the group en route, and also surviving in just absolute hell. So, okay. essentially, essentially, how I see it for Jasmine is uh, basically Jasmine trying to, uh, in, a, in a sense, just get vantage points to kind of keep the girl group oriented, to make sure we're going the right direction, not getting lost in this frozen wasteland, it's making our trip go as fast as possible. Alright. What are we looking yes. at here, Dark? I'm thinking Wisdom and my Captain of the Night Imperial Scouts. Okay. Seem fair? Sure. You're the DM. I'm... Okay. Uh, even with uh, me assessing, uh, that is a harder check, because your character would not be too familiar with this particular environment. Uh, she still passes fine, just fine. 32 will do it for sure. All right! <laughs> I did it twice in a row. I'm feeling good. This is a good opening. Uh, well, two, uh, f two folks did have nine, so I don't know whether you guys rolled... Uh, <laughs> I mean, overall, we're above average. Overall, we're above average. All right. An 18 does help. <laughs> it is uh, good that you folks uh, decided to travel th south uh, through the Fangs, uh, hoping for a meeting point uh, where you had uh, perhaps assigned your ships to meet up. I have uh, I have forgotten exactly what folks you, like, exit strategy you had in mind for the Fangs. What kind of exit strategy did you have in mind for the Fangs? I imagine we just um, uh, set up a meeting point where basically the uh, ships dropped us off, and uh... the idea was that the ships would one would particularly like hunt them in in the water as they're supposed to, while the other one would very much assist the the army we have here moving them around very quickly okay. from from a few sort of landing points. And we'd basically go to one of those landing points, and they would get here either like on the day or like maybe one or two days. All right, keeping the the whole mobility thing. Unless the Midland Sea is frozen, but then we're pretty screwed. Yeah. <laughs> and we can walk to Newport. Things from Necropolis just walk. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I have some uh, good news for you folks, uh, for starts. Uh, Happy New Year, and then beyond that, as you exit Sunseb and head into Need Wet, Needfest, and then into Fireseek, which is technically the last month of winter. Uh, the days have been horrid. Uh, for your characters, and so intense that a full heal-up has simply been impossible. Uh, so, your characters have just been continuing to suffer under a barrage of wintry hell. Eventually, the rain does peter out uh, when you're halfway through the swamp. There's no longer torrential downpour, and it begins to slowly subside, but the rivers are completely flooded, uh, if not frozen. And uh, walking here is an immense pain. Uh, good news, though. Uh, your armies here did manage to succeed in scattering the Sahagwin marauders, plaguing land and sea trade in this region. Uh, you will be awarded uh, two political power. And uh, you folks can get uh, two positive dice uh, spread out among the Emperor and Dwarf King. Alright, so what do we want to get there? Just the Emperor, or...? Well, um... Okay, the thing about the Dwarf King is we're probably not going to go up there, like... No. Like, in sort of, in... You know, in a hurry. Uh, we could still take one to have the magical number of three dice with Yeah, them. and that would also give us four with the Emperor, which is our magical Emperor number. So yeah. I think one with each would... Uh, we, I do think we need four now with the Dwarf King, though. Get no, yeah. it's three. Uh, three it's positive so. conflicted Dwarf King dice or four positive Greek or Worm dice. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought that just was plus one because of the plus one increase after that. I've already factored in the plus one increase. All right. That's just there to inform you that it has increased. I see. Well, then I think we should do that. Okay. 
you folks can do that. I also factored in the bonus that you folks have gotten from sealing the Bitter Meadow Caverns already. Mm. All right. Uh, you will arrive uh, completely soaked. Uh, it's been so difficult to uh, keep your clothes dry, which has sapped away at your energy and strength. Uh, food has run to practically non-existent, and you've been forced to subsist in the surrounding environment. Uh, one possibility would have been to hunt Sahagwen, uh, but as it turns out, most of them have been either killed or chased away from the fangs. Uh, reaching the long-awaited meeting point, uh, you do end up finding a makeshift pier that has been constructed where uh, one of the ships from uh, Lord Morgan Morian are waiting. Uh, there is some jubilation and excitement in the fact that you folks have survived the trip here. Uh, you are informed by many that uh, they did not think you'd be able to survive this trip. You had been gone for several months. Yeah. Any news from our people in Foothold? Um, the people in Foothold, uh, from what information the Imperial warships here have received, uh, which, by the way, none of them are damaged, uh, is that uh, Lord Inator and Ulysses have fully recovered from their injuries and their fatigue. Good. They, have they been told if they began their work to get to Glitterhagen? Uh, yes, uh, they have been told that. Uh, Lord Mulrian isn't entirely sure where they are, like, on the trip, uh, but uh, he does know that he sent notice that uh, they are to begin heading back to Glitterhagen. Uh, he'll also note that the Red Gauntlet Company has been has also returned to Glitterhagen. They finished their job here, their work was done. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, uh, let's not stay in the fangs. I mean, no, let's leave. <laughs> I'm sure our people would agree. Should not. So, yes, do so, we have... so many people ha are like huddled here together for like makeshift warmth. Uh, there has been quite a number of sailors who basically said, "Fuck this! I'm not being on this damn ship. I'm going home." Uh, right. So, do we head straight for Newport, or do we have to get? I... Back? I would say we had for. Uh, do we want to stop by Blitagen to grab our guys? I mean, I we, we, we could when just send one there. of our ships yeah, there. I would suggest and we, we send the ship to there too. Yeah. yeah. So that they can, like, fetch him. So we could send, like, uh, Lord Morgan to Glitterhagen and we go with Ravenger back to. I, I'd Europe. rather do it the opposite way around. <laughs> yes. Sure. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, like, both these are admirals of, uh, of the Empire, so. Mm. I'm sure That's we true. can trust them. <laughs> You sure can. <clears throat> so, uh... Right. Yeah. Man, when a certain cube unfolds, that's gonna be a thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I wanted to... Uh, well, to, let, uh, let's, let's take, uh, let's take uh, Lord Ravinger's ship. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I agree. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to take Lord Ravinger's ships, and, uh, what do you want to do with the unit Probably of the Imperial Mages, mages here? Too. Okay. Uh, I imagine we would take them, and then the Imperial Engineers, and set them to repairing Proudfort. Yep. Right? Yep. Isn't that the sort of the thing we have been hoping to get, like, away with? And there doesn't I, I seem to be an apocalypse. Well, I mean, except for the hmm. worst one. <laughs> Ignore except the apocalypse. The We're going for a power fall. Except for the winter. Yeah. yeah. Well. Except for the literal building, apocalypse. Building a roof yeah. might be a good start. Food resources have been extremely yeah. strained uh, for the army here. The uh, navy uh, will note that, uh, I mean, although you have, like political power like at this point there's like there's empire wide food shortages and yeah. it's you know the empire didn't recover from the last food shortage and now it's been plummeted into an even deeper one because this harvest also sucked yeah we might need aid from the wild wood I'm so curious to hear how it's going in my homeland of the queen's wood the elves generally have mercurial ways of, of acquiring their food but I Generally, not more than is used is produced. Uh, I imagine the wild wood would be better if, if, I mean, the wild wood has always been, I mean, not friends of civilization, but certainly not not enemies of, of the people of civilization. Perhaps some concessions could be made to the wild wood in exchange for aid from from the druids. Maybe so. Although I don't know if we have the authority to grant them anything. Could ask, uh, talk to the governor of Newport about it. It is known that they care about the hellhole down by the hum, mm. 
beyond that, I'm sure there are other things that... I mean, I have not had contact with druids, really, ever. We do have enough political sway at this point that we could make rather outrageous promises <laughs> or whatever they might want to ask hmm. in return for help. We do have to keep those promises, though. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have to keep our promises. Yes. That's how they work, usually. <laughs> Promise is like a free, free breakfast. Mm, complimentary breakfast. You know, just say some words and they'll do whatever for you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I, uh, uh, yeah, we do have the political power to do stuff. Um, you do have 12 political power. Yeah. Well, if you want the druid's help, it might not be a great idea to begin restoring Creel. <laughs> They don't like that. Well, we're gonna do that after Proudfoot, right? Well, yeah, that would be the idea. But but would mm. there pre would could Creel perhaps be like a, a wild place? Not anymore, because you moved oh, okay. it with the Archmages. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, mm. Regardless, uh, we should set out because I believe we are going to Newport. If nothing else, to start the Proudfoot thing. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's take our mages and uh, Reminger, and then uh, I suppose our people there. I mean, I don't think our garrison, like, they're stationed there, basically. They're never going to be finished. Um, even if I imagine they would be optimal for sort of defending Proud Fort, I imagine mages aren't going to be terrible people there either. Not terrible, no. As our sort of stationed <laughs> army. Mages yeah. uh, will pretty much be better at the garrison at just about everything. <laughs> yeah. As it turns out. <laughs> Magic. Except for like magic big inside cities, but. I'm sure they can do a little bit of shaping there to help the, the fort and such. It is a long term project. It is, and our engineers and mages will be dedicated to doing that, I think. Yeah. Uh, so I suppose the order then would be to uh, Raminger take the mages and us and go to Newport, while uh, Lord Morgan go to Glitterhargen and await uh, Enator and uh, Uly Ulysses. And then I suppose we take them to Newport as well, just because that's where we are. All yeah. Right. Before the late forces. Yeah. All right. Uh, Lord Mulrian will inform you he is unsure how long it will take uh, these days, what with uh, bits and hunks of ice of being in the Midland Sea, which is not really something that uh, many sailors have familiarity with navigating. He's not entirely sure how long a trip from Glitterhagen to Newport will take. Yeah, uh, we should also say that when the two uh, uh, armies of warships are, are in Newport, they should both head out to Cape Thunder to deal with the uh, uh, establishing naval... I'm, I'm sure we can give that order when they get there in like a couple we, give, weeks. We, we, might, we might not be there, though. Well, we'll either That's have true, a... uh, but if so, we'll have a standing order waiting for them. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll, either have a, we'll either have an order arranged, or we might find another use for them. Yeah. 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 Okay. They like, get there, and immediately even we're like, no! Yeah, yeah, we should also talk to our advisors first, I guess, before yeah. we do that. Like, too many contingencies can, can become a problem. Yeah. All right. Uh, you folks uh, aboard uh, one unit of Imperial warships led by the ravishing Lord Ravinger and set off for Newport, a city of wonder and opportunity and hopes and dreams and starlight. Mm. Right. I, I doubt that, but sure. You folks have consistently <laughs> doubted that. <laughs> but you know, that place would be pretty bad without our help. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the trip is harrowing and arduous. Uh, there's actually one point uh, where uh, one of the warships uh, crashes into an iceberg, and uh, it is only through the quick work of the mages that the uh, warship is able to stay afloat. Uh, the wind is uncooperative, although the uh, mages do offer some assistance. Uh, more Bergship raiders are sighted in your traveling as well, uh, carrying with them telltale signs of uh, winged figures flying above them. Man, frost giant dragons. Guys, why can't we have friends like that? <laughs> because we're not evil. That's true, we had the chance. You, <laughs> <laughs> you still do have a chance. 
You can always change sides. But uh, it's um, over a week uh, by the time that you arrive in Newport. Uh, the city is completely blanketed with snow and ice. Uh, conditions here uh, have really sunk to atrocious levels. Uh, the the wonderful city of opportunity and hopes and dreams is vastly overpopulated now, crammed with so many refugees that have fled from the east and the south and uh, even the west, uh, all trying to huddle together just to get a bite of food. Uh, the fields, well, dead winter. Nothing much is growing. Uh, even though the bitter meadow caverns have been sealed, uh, the current problem here is the temperature. Food prices are exorbitant, and while it's not a problem I will deduct from your gold piece expenses due to you folks being almost epic tier characters, keep in mind that you are actually now part of a privileged selection, if only because you can afford food on a consistent basis, and not even poor quality food. Could we maybe send out Ravager to fish? <laughs> well, it, it, not the problem is the problem isn't that that. There aren't people who would want to fish. It's that there aren't fish, and that there's Sahagin and ice and yeah. I, I thought the main problem was sharks. the Sahagin, but the warships could deal with that and uh, like assist the fishermen. I suppose we could maybe like have him passively try to assist what fishermen are there. Because, to because I imagine boats. the fishermen aren't really wanting to go out when there's Sahagin everywhere, so they uh, just stay in hot. There are plenty who do take a risk. All the same, uh, it's either yeah. that or starve to death. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, we, still, while, if we send out the warships, the, the eagle might be a bit better. Yeah. And yeah, they any, can also, anything like, fish help from help the yeah, warships. The, the, the vessels aren't the best at, like, hunting, like, individual mm. Sahagwin, like, in the Midland Sea, but they are certainly better than robo are. Yeah. And they yeah, might uh, also deter the Sahagwin from attacking. Who knows? Maybe, maybe whales come in from the Iron Sea. <laughs> 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 Go hunt whales. Yeah. yeah Catch shit. a few of those. There's a pretty big. But uh, yeah. if you want Ravinger to uh, loiter around for a bit until, like, Mulrian, you know, yeah. gets over yeah. and then, like, send him. Yeah, we can do that. And, uh, it's better than just twiddling his thumbs. Uh, yeah. As noted, the city is in pretty bad off condition. Yeah. So do we want to meet with your, well, I suppose your allies more so than your superiors at this point. Uh in the city before uh, before advancing to Proudford. I suppose there would be plenty of people who would, would probably go with us in exchange for like a promise of work and food. Uh, which well, I assume is... We don't is really have food, but... Well, I assume that the, the PowerPoint here would be actually spent on like securing the necessary materials and, and such. It yes. won't be glorious, but yes. it will be better than starving in the street. Right? You guys are almost at the point where like the expense of that uh, might increase if it doesn't get done now uh, due to the lack of food. Like No matter how powerful you are, there's literally only so much food in the Dragon mm -hmm. Empire now. We're just yeah. like saying, feed that guy instead at this point. That th Those are the choices you're looking at making. I mean, as cruel as that might sound, we have bigger problems to deal with. We can't deal with the symptoms. We need to deal with the cause. You, and you, if... you cannot feed everyone. Exactly. We ha we have yeah. to make certain decisions. And we shouldn't feel bad about them, because yeah. why would we? It is a problem uh, you can be assured that epic tier characters and the icons are tackling. Yeah. Would, would the Hydroot be mad if you like cleared the forest out in this area? It's probably. not her forest, but she'd still be mad. Also, like, why would you want to do that? There's probably animals living there. Sure, but I would think for farmland, basically. I, Next well, this doesn't really help now in the yeah, winter. Yeah, yeah. Yes, your Pearl would also be protecting that stuff. If yeah, the yeah. Empire could easily, like, colonize there and build settlements, they would do so. And build, like, massive structures. In a year, perhaps. When Pearl is <laughs> prepared, we can begin. Right? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> next, next spring... <laughs> Next spring, we begin the terraforming projects. <laughs> I guess we could send some hunters there, then. Uh, well, yeah, I imagine that's all part of, of sort of our mages being stationed there, too. Well, to, well they're, they're stationed there to protect the engineers, to ensure yeah. that yeah. no one fucking, like, says... Right, but I imagine they're sort of the superfluous population of people sort of doing... 
Yes, uh, there are folks who will be heading to Proud Fort, and you can rest assured uh, that uh, with all of the overpopulation and people not having many places to go or much to do, with rampant unemployment, they'll surely take advantage of the opportunity. Uh, yeah, finding people is not the problem. Oh, there's there is a surplus of uh, labors. Yep. Uh, are there any uh, any news from the Wildwood about how the druids are doing with this whole winter um, or thing? They don't like it, as far as I understand. There is uh, scattered news uh, that you uh, can get uh, just basically in the docks and, like, swimming through the unwashed masses of people in Newport. It sounds like the druids have actually turned internally. Uh, druids have been called from all across the uh, the known world uh, to come to the Wild Wood, there appears to be a standoff and a conflicting ideology between two groups. Oh. War or not, I imagine. Uh, yeah. What uh, side to support? There's uh, lots of conflict. rumors uh, raging uh, amongst the uh, the masses of laborers and people, and even a few druids sprinkled around the lot, because a few druids are just about in every uh, major city except for Horizon. Uh, there seems to be a deep division uh, regarding what uh, the, basically, the druids will do. I mean, surely an eternal winter isn't in their best interest, right? Right. No, but... Who are they blaming is the but maybe unleashing the wrath of the Iron Sea is finally what has brought this winter upon the damn civilization that will bring it to crumble, and then the balance of nature will be restored. Okay. Growing resentment has built in this age within a strong high druid uh, towards actually kicking civilization back to the shoreline, where it belongs. And particularly over this past, the past 16 months, a really strong faction has arisen in the wild wood. Uh, that is calling for aggressive action towards the Dragon Empire, specifically because it's teetering so precariously here. There's other elements. Uh, some say there is a great stag involved uh, that is calling for uh, more calm and diplomatic approaches and attempt to assist the Dragon Empire with the numerous elements that besiege, you know, besiege the world. Uh, the druids uh, have not decided. That is why a massive conclave has been called, uh, being held in the wild wood. Uh, druids from all of over are gathering. If we could show the druids the danger of the white returning and the, the rise of the lich king, then perhaps they would... I mean, the druids are strong. Uh, stronger than they ever been. I, I, She's I would the assume, sister of the queen. I would assume that they are very well aware of the danger, but the question is whether or not they want to act before or after the Dragon Empire crumbles. Are they aware of the danger? Do you believe that many know of, of this... of this issue? The, the peasantry the... also has rampant speculation about why eternal winter has fallen. Mm -hmm. Is the white is returned by the Lich King one of them? That is certainly one of the <laughs> numerous rumors. <laughs> What's the most outrageous one? <laughs> Santa Claus is angry, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, every single icon has been implicated by one peasant or another uh, for the current state of conditions. And I do mean every single icon. From the Archmage's, from the Archmage's wards, like him trying to control reality too much and this just being a massive magical backlash... To the priestess losing favor with the, the gods of light and good. To the prince of shadows stealing the sun. <laughs> Probably like the, the great gold worm needs to stop blocking all the, all the warmth from the abyss. He is consuming all of the energy of light in an, an effort, his continued futile attempt to block demons from escaping into the abyss. It's either death with one hand or death with the other. I mean, a demonic rain would probably be easier to survive, some would argue, than uh, not being able to grow any crops. Well, you know, the imperial population seem to be growing a uh, liking of slavery, so that certainly solves a lot of problems. <laughs> mm. 
It's the Dwarf King's fault. I'm sure somehow he did it. Or the Orc, Orc Lord might be hard to implicate as well. Every single icon is uh, being fingered for uh, their perceived failings by the common folk. Orc Lord has failed to kill the Emperor. It's horrible. No, it's not just the white coming back, it's the green coming back, it's massive Sahagwin monstrosities and deep Cthulian-esque like creatures coming in from the Iron Sea. It's like a, a horrid backlash that's been 13 ages in the making, when the Iron Sea is finally going to react and it's causing all this winter because the Sahagwin actually really like the cold. And they're going Let's to make all these warm-blooded creatures true. suffer. Well, let, let's not. Otherwise, and we it just run away. Actually, the, the, el the elf queen's apathy has finally come to the point where she's so capricious that she's basically saying, eh, eh. "You know, so, elf, uh, it not be that." Powerful bad. elven magics are raining wintry blizzards upon the world, and then once humanity is broken, the elf queen and the dwarf king will stride out of their homes and claim <laughs> the world once again. Together, Garak. Uh, you should take down uh, human the <laughs> There's not only conspiracies involving all of the icons, there's conspiracies uh, involving any two of the icons joining forces together. Right, this so is a collusion any... between the Emperor and the Orc Lord, I swear it. Emperor has married the Lich King. Also, the, em the Emperor and the Lich King, I gotta say. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'll never listen to that. In, in short, uh, yes, there, the rumor does exist that the White has returned. That's what's causing winter. White was one of the most powerful icons. The witch, witch until the wizard king slew it. But you know, Draco Lich. Why not, right? Which, uh, which important people are you familiar with in this city who might be able to sign any letter we might want to send to important people in the administration of different sort of powerful icons of our time so that they may know of this danger with... Uh, some more uh, assurance than just whatever people say on the street. You are also going to hear numerous rumors of conflicting reports of a great battle that took place a few months prior, southwest of Santa Cora. The Battle of the of Wolfwold Hills. When great barbarian hordes challenged imperial might and steel, and lost, right? Yes, the barbarians lost. Good, good. No, Santa Cora is not a barbarian city. <laughs> hmm. Oh, fuck. The priestess is dead, so all the gods. But the prices Sucks. and blood were terrible. Numerous dragons were involved in the exchange. And supposedly, one of the superiors themselves died. Dragon hmm. died? Several dragons died as well. That's Man, if we had those barbarians, they were good several dragons. <sighs> Maybe. Yeah. But uh, the unwashed masses are too conflicting to give you like many reports, and all the icons are implicated in the barbarian attack as well. <laughs> yeah. All but of them? We, wow. we should go and talk to our advisors. Emperor. Yeah. Wanted. Maybe yeah, they have room. better suggestions. Yes, yeah, so they're listening to more to share reliable information, please. Yeah, so uh, listening to peasants uh, say about how the dwarf governor and Tereptus meeting sounds like. Yeah, and a group of advisors. I mean, ask, we haven't actually swarf of advisors. Should we haven't died? Organizing a meeting with Lord Tereptus uh, is impossible, along with meeting with most of the individuals who have been giving you advice. Approaching the Arcane College would find it uh, to be manned by nothing more than a skeleton crew. Lord Tereptus has been recalled to Horizon. And almost all of the mages here, except for a few uh, who are just maintaining the grounds and the wards, have uh, gone to the seawall to try and hold the defenses together and the failing wards and beat back the monstrosities invading from the Iron Sea. Huh. And we spend our time saving dwarves. Well, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know. Yes, Lord Tereptus is no longer in Newport, and the Arcane College is a skeleton, a shadow of its former self. So the, no advice I mean, either. The governor, yes, there sure. are some. Imperial Governor Arthur Tristan is still here, and uh, because I mean, he knows uh, Lady Jasmine Rose, that was vain, you'd certainly be able to get in to see him. Perhaps Lady Rose, you would explain to him what we have discovered in the far north, 
and how important that this information could be to the Empire at large. Assuming we find a way to make ourselves heard over all the other rumors. I suppose our names and the knowledge of what we have been doing this last year might carry some weight by itself. I hope so. The favor is, well, just the entire idea is a bit more than I think you'd like to accept. It would be convenient to forget it. However, so it would be convenient to forget the events of the Frost Fist or a demonic invasion having occurred. Or the constant winter and hunger that the Empire is suffering from. Mm. 